If you have something like the Uno with a 10-bit ADC, there's times when you may want to use an external ADC. Maybe you need to be able to measure differential inputs. Maybe you need more than 10 bits resolution to take finer measurements. Or maybe you're using up all the pins that you already have and you'd like to add more external analog measuring capabilities. Let's take a look at using this ADS-1115, which is a 16-bit ADC that communicates over I squared C and is available on convenient breakout boards that we can use with Arduino. With the Arduino Uno's built-in 10-bit ADC, we can read in a value between 0 and 1023, representing a range of 0 to 5 volts, assuming the ADC's reference voltage is set to 5 volt VCC. So if we split up 5 volts into 1024 units, we get about 4.9 millivolts per unit. That comes from having a 10-bit ADC, 2 to the 10 is 1024, so the input range is between 0 and 1023, which is a total of 1024 units. And if we're measuring up to 5 volts, 5 volts divided by 1024 units means that each unit is 4.88 millivolts. So let's look at a 16-bit ADC. We can run it from 2 to 5 volts, so we're going to run it at 5. We can connect it to the Arduino with I squared C, and it's got four input pins, which we can use as four single-ended ADC inputs like Arduino, or we can use them as two differential inputs. Here's an example of using differential measurement on an ADC. If you have a sensor or device that's giving you a differential output, there's two signals that are complementary. So when one is high, the other is low. When one is low, the other is high. So you connect each of these signals to an ADC input, and the result is the signal on the positive input minus the signal on this minus input. So at this point, you have 1 volt minus 0, which gives you 1 volt out. Right here you have 0 minus 1, which is negative 1 volts. So from two inputs that are positive voltages, you're reconstructing a plus and minus polarity signal. But if there's any noise on the wires, that gets cancelled out by this subtraction. So let's say the peak of this noise is 0.5 volts more than the true signal. And if the noise is just getting picked up on the wires, it's likely being picked up equally on both. So right here at this 1 volt signal level, let's say this peak is 1.5 volts. Down here on this other wire, we also have 0.5 volts higher than this level of 0. So right here we have 1 minus 0, which is 1, what we want, and right here we have 1.5 minus 0 0.5, which equals 1. So we've gotten rid of the noise with a differential measurement. It also has a programmable gain amplifier, so even if we are running at 5 volts, but our input signal is only ever going to be maybe 100 millivolts, we can amplify that, so then with our 16-bit ADC, instead of measuring our full scale with only a tiny signal in and wasting all of that extra available measurement, if we use this range, plus and minus 256 millivolts, to measure our maximum 100 millivolt signal, we have those 16 bits dedicated to this smaller range, so we can really get fine measurements. Here's what the ADC looks like. We have our four analog inputs. We have our amplifier. It's got a built-in voltage reference, so we don't need to provide anything else. And then we set our address with this pin, and we communicate over I squared C. Here's the different settings we can have on our programmable gain amplifier. So by setting this amplifier up, our full-scale analog range can go from beyond what we're actually allowed to measure at 5 volts max, all the way down to this small range of only plus and minus a couple of hundred millivolts. But we're not allowed to exceed our limits of ground and our positive supply voltage. So when we're using this 6.144 full-scale range, we don't actually get to use anything beyond 5 volts if that's our power supply. It's similar to having an amplifier circuit where the gain is set so high 
that if you tried to actually use all of that gain, you would get clipping. We also can't put in a negative voltage, even though this says we can read plus and minus voltages. Just like in this example, if we're doing a differential measurement, we have the two positive input voltages, but the result can be plus or minus, just due to the subtraction of these two positive numbers. So out of this 16-bit ADC, it's in 2's complement, and we only really get 15 bits of voltage magnitude data. So 2 to the 15 bits means we have 32768 units of voltage measurement, and if our programmable gain amplifier is set for a full scale of 6.144 volts, then each unit of our measurement is 0.1875 millivolts. So that's where these numbers come from. They're basing it on 15 bits of voltage measurement data with each of these full scale voltage settings. These are the voltage increment units you can measure. So with 15 bits of voltage magnitude plus another bit to indicate the positive or negative polarity, what this translates to is when we're reading the value in the Arduino, we end up with a positive or negative 15 bit magnitude voltage reading. And if we multiply it by the correct volts per unit based on the range we are using, we get the actual voltage number. There's a lot more info in the data sheet about how this all works, so you can go look that up. But let's switch over to actually putting this to use on Arduino. I'm going to use an Adafruit library for this ADC. The library comes with a couple of examples. Here's my schematic. This module has I squared C pull up resistors on it, so I just connect serial clock and data to the Arduino, 5 volts and ground to the power supply on this module. And I'm configuring the address of the module by grounding the address input, and that happens to be the default address that the Adafruit library uses. Then there's the four analog inputs, so three of them are connected to potentiometers between 5 volts and ground, so I can vary the voltage across the acceptable range. The fourth one I'm not using, so the datasheet suggests grounding. I'm going to do both single-ended and differential measurements. The remaining potentiometer on analog 2, I'm also measuring at the same time on the Arduino's 10-bit analog 0 input. So we can compare the same voltage being measured with 10-bit or effective 15-bit resolution. For our external ADC and our internal Arduino ADC, these are the voltage scaling factors. So this is how many millivolts per unit increment are on each ADC. I'm not setting the gain on the ADS device, so it's going to use the default giving me my maximum voltage range, so I'll be able to put in 0 to 5. So I read in a differential measurement, and then a single-ended measurement on those same two inputs, then a single-ended measurement on the third pot, which is duplicated on the Arduino's analog input, and then I print this all out in a certain way that's going to be easy for me to see the info I'm trying to get out of this sketch. Here's my physical setup, and I've paused the serial monitor for now. I have a voltmeter on standby so I can momentarily check some voltages. The first two potentiometers are for the differential measurement. The third potentiometer is the one going both to the 15-bit and the Arduino 10-bit analog input. And I have this extra multi-turn trimmer pot in series so that I can make very small changes just to compare the difference on the two analog resolutions. So to start with, I'm doing a differential measurement between analog input 0 minus input 1. And the differential result is 5 volts. And then my single-ended measurements confirm I'm taking 5 volts minus basically 0 volts to get overall 5. There's the 5 volts on analog 0 and 0 volts on analog 1. So now if I change this so that analog 0 is 0 volts and analog 1 is 5 volts, I should get a differential measurement of 0 minus 5, which equals negative 5. So I'll let this auto scroll and I'll change the two pots. When I make both of them 5 volts, 
Each one is now measuring about 5 volts, and the difference is close to zero. Now I have zero minus five, and I have a differential of minus five volts. So that's how we get our measurement range plus and minus five volts from two positive inputs. Now looking at this other single ended input, so it's still 0.717, and the 15 bit measurement is agreeing with the fluke meter, it's 717 millivolts, but the Arduino 10 bit measurement is already off, it's measuring 683 and 688 millivolts and that could be because we're not using a precision voltage reference we're just using VCC of the board so it's probably jumping around which is how we're getting from 683 to 688 sometimes but also the power supply which is our reference voltage on Arduino isn't exactly 5 volts right now it's 5.15 so that's where we're really getting this difference in measurements the sketch is calculating based on an ideal 5.0 volts. So that's where using the precision voltage reference makes our readings more stable. And now let's look at when we make a small change in the input voltage. Let's see how each analog channel handles that. So I'll use the trimmer pot and try to make a small change. And I'll pause the scrolling. So I changed it from 717 millivolts down to 714 millivolts. So it's about a 3 millivolt difference that we are picking up here, but I didn't notice any change on the Arduino 10-bit, because with 10-bit resolution, we're only able to pick up changes of 4.88 millivolts. So this 3 millivolt change, if this was an actual sensor where that difference meant something, we wouldn't be able to detect it with a 10-bit ADC, and we would want something with more bits of resolution. So if you have an application where you want better than 10-bit resolution, or if you need to do more specialized types of measurements, or you need more stability than the Arduino's ADC can provide, using a simple module like this is one way to increase your capabilities 